All right, so now we're over at the bike and we're going to show you how to change the spark plug wires and the spark plugs. A couple things to be aware of, I'm going to point those out to you, but a lot of times when you go to pull the boot off the spark plug wire, you do it a, a, a wrong way and you pull the wire out of the boot, okay? If you do that, it's not the end of the world as long as you don't tear anything, but you don't want to do that. There's a couple ways I can show you to help you get around that. Sometimes the boots are just stuck onto the wires. There's not much you can do. So what we're gonna do is obviously you guys know where this stuff is. I pulled the cheese wedge off so you can you know, see in here better. But you have the front cylinder and the rear cylinder. Obviously the front spark plug wire, the rear spark plug wire. Up here is the ignition coil. Okay, so you really don't have to mess with that just other than pulling the wires off. But the problem that happens is down in here, down in the spark plug holes, when you go to pull this boot off, it, it's stuck to the wire, or it's stuck to the spark plug, okay? So it's really hard. So a couple tips is sometimes if you, you know, wobble this around as best as you can, that will help to break that seal. The other thing, if you can see, I don't know if you can see up here, but what, if you can twist it, you know, just rotate it, just try to twist it as you're pulling a little bit, that sometimes will help break it off. So it's, it's, you know, wobble it, twist it, whatever, to try to get that to break that seal off of there. The one thing that guys do is they get on the wire here and they pull. You absolutely don't want to do that. Do not pull on this wire because if you do, you're going to break it. You're either going to rip it from inside the terminal where, where the wire attaches to the terminal or you're going to pull it right out of the boot, okay? Either way, you're not really screwed, but you pretty much are, okay? You can fix it if you know how, but at that point, you need to just change the wires, okay? If you're changing the wires, it doesn't matter what you do. Yank the thing off of there. You can always get the boot off, okay? But if you want to save the wires, you want to be careful. So a couple things you can do. Needle nose pliers work pretty good. You can get down in, in the cylinder here. You can get in there and kind of pry it off like that. Okay, I'll put it back on and show you. What I do is I just kind of get on the wire itself and then just use the fin as leverage. And you're not prying hard, so you're not gonna screw the fin up. But just kind of pry that up, okay? Sometimes that still won't work. Get in there and just, with the pliers, jiggle it around, twist it around, you know, whatever you can do to get that loose. It will come off, trust me. The other thing you can do is they make a tool, um, it's called a pick and they, these come different lengths, whatever. This is the cheap set, like a Harbor Freight set. You can actually take this hook, if you can see that hook on there, you can take that hook and you hook the boot down in there and you just like hook it right into the rubber and you just lift and you know, pull it off that way. So if you do rip the boot, taking it off, you almost have to have something like this to kind of just chip away at it and pull that boot off of the spark plug. So those are the ways that you can get those boots off. Um, just have to be patient. Obviously, you want to do it when the engine's cold. You don't want to do it when it's hot because it's just you, you will absolutely bump your hands on this and you'll get burned. So you want to just be careful of that. Okay. Another thing you want to do is you want to absolutely pay attention to where the wires go on the coil. If you take them off and you forget, and you connect the wires back on and you put them in the wrong spot, the bike either A, won't start, which is probably what will happen, or it'll run terrible. So more than likely the bike won't start at all. So make sure you can take a picture with your cell phone, you can draw, draw a picture on a piece of paper, whatever, where this goes. The other thing you can do is, and, and what we do a lot of times, if you have a magic marker, just put a dot, you know, you can put a dot right here and put a dot on your boot. That way you know to line up the dot to the dot. If you're going to replace the wires, you can always look back at the old wire and see where it goes. Okay, you can make a number one and number two, or you can say front and rear for however you want to do it. But just make sure you don't cross these up because a lot of times we get calls and guys say, I put wires on and the bike won't start. It's because they put these on the back uh, on the wrong terminals. Okay, so with that said, the only other thing you do, and if your bike's never had the wires changed, down in here is a little clip, okay, that holds this wire to the bracket. That little clip, you can either um, cut it. It's kind of a little zip tie type deal. You can cut that if you want. Um, 
but if I can't show you here because you can't see it, but on the back side, it's kind of a spread like this. It goes in the hole and spreads out. What you have to do is you can use pliers or a screwdriver and squeeze that back together. And when you squeeze it back together, use these little needle nose. When you squeeze that back together, it'll pull out. Okay, so I don't know here if you can see this or not. I'll try to get it where you can see it. But yeah, you can see how it's kind of like, like an arrowhead looking thing. And what happens when it goes in the hole, <coughs> excuse me, it goes in the hole and the, uh, they spread out and catch. So once you get that off, we have this wire already loose. <coughs> You know, pull that off and you know, do the same on the back. So if you wobble it around and pull, they'll come right off. Now, you always see this white junk on here. A lot of you guys will say, oh, I washed my bike and it's always um, putting white powdery stuff out. That's just kind of the corrosion type stuff from the aluminum. The water gets down in that spark plug hole. Um, it sits in there. And when you start the bike up after you wash or after it rains, that'll run out and it'll leave that white residue on there. No big deal, just wipe it off. It, it, it doesn't mean anything's wrong or anything like that. Okay, so that's the wires. So your spark plugs are down in there, okay? They're down in there pretty far. You have to have, a, a, obviously, a socket. You can't use a wrench on that. So the socket you use on these is a 5 8 socket. Uh, you really should use a spark plug socket. You don't have to. But if, if you have one, make sure you use that. If you don't have a 5 8 a 16 millimeters really close, it'll work. 5 8 is more common than, than 16 millimeters, so most guys have the 5 8 So what you do, just take, you know, you need a little extension. I have like a three inch extension here. Put it in there, okay? And just like anything, don't be afraid to do it with, you know, because it's the motor, it's not the end of the world. And just get that broke loose. And again, this is why you do this when it's cold, not hot. Now, a spark plug socket generally has rubber up in here. So when you push it down on, it grabs the spark plug, okay? So that you can get the spark plug out. Because if you see, I can't get it out. It's, it's, you eventually can, like you just kind of hold pressure on it and you can get it out, okay? But if you can't do that, and you have the plug loose, all you gotta do is take your boot, push your boot back down on there, and pull the spark plug out. All right, simple as that. And you can see on here, the white powdery junk, and if you can see it on my fingers, a little bit of rust from the, from the uh, metal, okay? That's normal, that's on anything, okay? So you take a plug. One thing, I'm not gonna get into spark plug tech and all that, but down in here, this is your ground strap, try to show you close up here this is the ground strap the piece on the outside this is actually the electrode in the middle and what the spark does it goes between the electrode and the ground strap and it fires right in that little spot right there that's where it fires when the plugs are all sooted up like these ones it can give you a little misfire um, kind of means it's running rich you know again I'm not going to get into all that but that's kind of what you're looking at most plugs are either going to be a little bit black or a little bit tan kind of color tans almost perfect okay so we're going to do the same thing on the back one and sometimes they're in there hard and sometimes they're not they'll, they'll they're hard to get going but then they should just kind of unscrew right out see that one i can't get out just pop the boot on pull it right out now you can see a lot of white junk on there from that one, okay? So again, perfectly normal, plug looks the same. If anything, you would maybe compare the two, make sure they're kind of the same. You don't want one really black and one tan. Um, you kind of want them to be even. That means the bike's running, you know, uh, consistent front to back cylinders. Okay, so that's the plugs, that's getting the plugs out. Now, you don't wanna be messing around in here because you don't wanna be dumping anything down, dropping anything down in that spark plug hole. If you do, you got a nightmare. 
So don't be spraying water, don't be spraying brake, brake clean, don't be doing anything. Just get the spark plugs back in it, okay? We carry the NGK, Witch Doctors, that's uh, uh, what comes in it, okay? So, a couple things about the spark plug, and you can see the difference between new and used, okay? You can absolutely see this ground strap and the electrode in here. Electrode's the little thing sticking up. The white part here is called the insulator. Okay, so you can see it better now with the with the clean plug. Couple things you can do. Some people um, do it. Some people don't. Okay, there's something called never seize anti seize um, that you can use. I recommend it a little bit. You have your sealing gasket on here. You can see the gasket, but the anti seize you just put a little bit on the threads and you do not use a lot. A little goes a long way. Okay, and I'll show you here. A little pack of this stuff, you get this a couple bucks at AutoZone or something. Just put a little bit of that on there, okay, and then smear it around with your finger. You don't have to put it completely around it, just get it on there, and then when you screw it in, it'll, it'll wrap itself around, okay. This stuff is a nightmare to get off your finger. It just keeps smearing, so I know a lot of you guys that know what I'm talking about are going, oh yeah, that sucks. So don't wipe it on your pants, it's just hard to get off, have a rag. You don't want to get the anti-seize down in the electrode part. So make sure you know you don't slop any of it in there. This is not one of those things, more is better. Just put enough on there, okay? Now, another tip for you. If you have an old set of plug wires, um, or if you're gonna still uh, not reuse these, or even if you're gonna reuse them, when you put the spark plug back down in the hole, it's gonna be hard because your fingers can't get in there. It's, it's hard to do. Again, your boot is a friend. If you have an old wire, cut the wire off and just save the boot. Push it in there and push it in there so it snaps in, just like if it was in the motor. Hear it click in there. That way you know it's, it's grabbed pretty good. So then, just take it and get it down in there. And just give it a couple turns. Now your wire is going to twist all around and all that, okay? So that's why it's actually easier to do this when the, uh, you know, if you're going to put another set of wires. I kind of go backwards with the twist, so when I twist it in, it'll straighten out. They make a special spark plug installer tool if you're that trick. Basically, it's a boot with a screwdriver handle attached to it. Wait, get it in there. So what I'm going to do, I'll show you something because we're going to replace the wires. This is a pain in the ass right now because this wire's twisted. So I'll show you what you do. Just pull this really hard. It'll come out. So I'll try to do it where you can see it. But I'm just working it, pulling it out. That's what's inside your wire. What will happen if you pull on the wires like I said in the beginning? You'll tear it right here and this connector will, will come off. Then you got a real pain in the ass to get stuff apart. Okay, so that's all you gotta do right there. That's your uh, wire. So now we have the boot. So I said if you had a, if you had a tool, uh, you buy it. If you had an old screwdriver, basically. I'm just using my extension, but that's all it is. You put a little handle. Okay, so let me get my plug back out. Put it in there. You can see big difference. And there's a lot of thread there, so you're gonna crank it down. I always like to put it in all the way, okay? That way you know you're not stripping anything out. And you'll feel it start catching, which this is fighting me the whole way, of course, right? If the camera wasn't running, I'd have been done an hour ago. a little bit harder because the metal thing is not grabbing it <laughs> son of a bitch right time for a beer right you try to do a video and you say oh this is easy we 
could go wrong, it goes wrong when you got a camera going. Any of you guys getting pissed off like I am right now? All right, now I'm pissed off. So let's try the back one. <laughs> Can you believe this shit? Huh. All right. All right, there, I finally got it with my fingers. All right, about time. All right, so you just do the same thing with the other one. A little anisees on there. Okay. Watch this one go right in. It definitely is easier if you have a little handle on here because you can grab it better. And I do like doing this better this way because if you put it in with the socket, I'll show you. If you were to do it this way, you can still do it this way, but it's harder. Um, you could strip it, okay? Because you don't, you gotta, you gotta really feel it. And if you don't know what you're doing, it's hard to feel that. There you go. So you, you gotta be careful when you do that. And then just snug them up. You're not going crazy here. You're not putting them in with 10,000 pounds of force, okay? Just put them, basically they'll stop, and then you just give it just a little bit more of a turn, not much at all. All you're trying to do is you're just trying to compress this new gasket right here. You do not want to over tighten these things. Don't go crazy with them. Okay. All right, so that's the plugs. And if they would have went in, we'd have been done already. So the next thing we got is the wires I talked about. Um, we have these in all different colors. These are the Taylor eight millimeter wires. They're better than the factory that see. They have the radio interference in them. Uh, we make these here in house. So we have all different colors. We actually have a new, uh, a new set that we just came out with. If you could see, this is the black with the red um, lines in it. Uh, real popular with the highball guys. Um, kind of that old nostalgia look. Kind of a cloth looking uh, wire like in the 50s type thing. So we have them again in all different colors. So the last trick here that you want to do is you can get something called dielectric grease at the hardware store. Just a little pack. It's a little clear. Almost looks like silicone. Okay. What the dielectric grease does it makes a waterproof seal around the spark plug, okay? The other thing it does is when you wanna pull these boots off in a year or so, it keeps that from sticking on there, okay? So you just take a little bit of this, and I just put a little bit of it in the boot there, okay? I just stick some of it in the boot. Okay, now you can put a little on the coil end too. You don't have to, it's, it's, I always just put them on the spark plug end. 
Okay, now to change the wire here, you're just gonna pull this and, and kind of grab it by the boot up here. Don't pull the wire again. I know you want to, but don't do it. Just pull it and twist it, it'll come right off. Put the new wire in, okay? Just run that down. Push it on the wire. You should kind of hear it click when you put it on there, okay? I don't know if you could hear that when I pull that off, it clicks. And the same with that, it clicks when you go on. Take that, push it down on, and like I say, just make sure it snaps. Now, if you want to reuse that um, little connector, or where it went here, you have to uh, pull the thing off. It also spreads apart, okay? So if it's on the wire, you can just spread it apart. So if you want to reuse that, just put it on here. Okay, just like that. Put it back up in there. Snap it in. That's all you got to do, nothing to it. Okay, make sure your wires are connected good. Make sure they're connected good on the plugs. You can see how the red just makes the motor stand out so much better. If you couple this with our uh, spark plug fillers from Curiocan, we have those on the site. We sell tons of those things. Really makes a big difference on dressing this up. Um, so that with some wires, your bike will start running good. Uh, it's not any harder than that. Like I said, if those, if those plugs would have went in there and not fought me there, we'd have been done 20 minutes ago. So that is all there is to changing wires and spark plugs on your Victory motorcycle. Thanks for watching. This is our newest wire we just came out with. Um, popular with the highball guys. We were doing a little research and, and trying to find out. This is a black wire with red stripe in it. It's, it's like a, a wrap of a red stripe, so pretty cool. This is the old nostalgia stuff for you guys that were around in the 50s with the old hot rod cars and all that.